Speaker in the Scottish Parliament, Ian Gray. First, a brief look at his career so far. A physics graduate from the University of Edinburgh, Ian Gray taught maths and physics at Gracemount High School in Edinburgh for seven years before leaving to teach in an agricultural technical school on the banks of the Limpopo River in Mozambique. He then spent 12 years working as Scottish Campaigns Director for Oxfam. He was elected as MSP for Edinburgh Pentlands in the first Holyrood elections in 1999. He was appointed Minister for Social Justice under Jack McConnell, then took over the ministerial brief for Enterprise after Wendy Alexander resigned from the post in 2002. After losing his seat to the Conservatives' David McCletchie in the 2003 Holyrood elections, he went to work as a special advisor to Alistair Darling, then Secretary of State for Scotland. He returned to the Scottish Parliament in 2007 as MSP for East Lothian. He was elected Scottish Labour leader in September 2008, again following the resignation of Wendy Alexander. Well, when I spoke to Ian Gray earlier this evening, I asked him to define what was the single most important issue on his election agenda. The single most important issue, and I think if you asked any Scot, they would give you the same answer, is jobs in the economy. I, I mean, this is a real time of uncertainty. People are concerned about their jobs. They're concerned about how they'll pay their mortgages. They're concerned about the future prospects for their sons and daughters, their grandchildren. And that's why our focus will be uh, on jobs, on the economy, protecting jobs, creating jobs, particularly in those new industries like life sciences, renewable energy, where we can create the jobs that can make Scotland prosperous in the 21st century. Now, what part then does the Future Jobs Fund have in all of this? Well, the Future Jobs Fund was, uh, you know, an incredibly successful uh, response to the recession which the previous Labour government in Westminster uh, introduced. Uh, it was an enormous success, created tens of thousands of job opportunities to help young people get back into work in Scotland, hundreds of thousands of, across the country. Uh, and indeed, uh, employers who were involved in providing those job opportunities also thought that that, uh, that scheme was a huge success. Uh, we believe that the coalition government in Westminster made a huge mistake by cancelling that programme uh, and it's our intention to introduce a Scottish version of it. It won't be exactly the same. It can't be. It will be done in partnership with the private sector. We're already talking to uh, some of the big companies, big employers in Scotland, and have had a very, very positive response. Right, so but what jobs? it's about... Well, we've, we've committed to 100,000. We'll, we will, uh, across the, 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 the piece, we will uh, advertise the first ones within the first 100 days. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, uh, really think uh, that that's the kind of thing right. that should be the priority for any party in the run-up to this, this election. Given so our young people a chance, <clears throat> nothing could be more important than that. So you're prioritising this, and the key part of this is getting more money out of Whitehall. We know from past experience it's been extremely difficult for Labour administrations and also SNP administrations to have Whitehall make an exception for Scotland. So you are predicating a key part of your election strategy on a policy that hasn't been agreed, approved or financed, and actually on past experience will not be. Well, the part of the approach is to seek, to seek to work in partnership with the UK government. But as I've said to you, part of it is also to seek to support, and that includes financial support from the private sector, our uh, vision is of uh, a, a partnership, a public and private partnership, to take forward something which we believe is good, but I think uh, the Scottish business community think is good as well. More generally on the economy, you have been very critical of the SNP's handling of the economy and given a lot of the private sector job creation will be dependent on a thriving uh, public sector, as it were. When you look at what voters think about Labour's track record on the economy, they know Labour was culpable in the economic crisis. They know that there was inadequate regulation and no management of systemic risk. What parts of the financial crisis do you go to the voters with and say, 
we were responsible for that and admit that? Well, I, I think there's widespread agreement that regulation should have been stronger. Uh, but look at, uh, it wasn't just Labour that wasn't arguing for stronger regulation at the time. The SNP, for example, for, were arguing that regulation of the financial sector yeah, was, was too was strong. At the the time. SNP were arguing that regulation of the financial sector was too so strong. They wanted light touch regulation. Right. But look, Isabel, what people know, what people know, everyone knows is, that we had a banking crisis which was global and a recession which was global. Uh, and I think people in Scotland also know that Gordon Brown and Alistair Darling took the key decisions which were necessary to protect the Scottish banking sector uh, and the Scottish economy. And if they hadn't taken those decisions, the circumstances in which we find right. ourselves now would be far worse. It, what then, to clarify, is your position on bank bonuses? I, I, I would like to see uh, bank bonuses significantly restricted uh, or even stopped. How and I think that? that's, that's the general view. Uh, well, uh, I, th I think we look at uh, the levy, we look at taxation. I think there are ways uh, that could be done in order to reduce those bonuses significantly. And I think that's what the public uh, would like to see happening. What sort of ways? By increasing taxation or, inc or increasing the levy. If we can now move on to clarify a couple of things on your positions, what about university funding in the longer term? Well, look, <clears throat> this is something that should have been sorted out a long time ago. We've been saying for two years uh, that we need to find a long-term sustainable way of funding our higher education system, both the institutions uh, but also supporting uh, students because, that, because right? our students because our students in Scotland uh, don't have the same level of support available to them uh, in order to fund themselves through university. So what is that and should there be a specifically Scottish solution? Uh, well yes there should be a specifically Scottish solution because uh, there is absolutely no way that we want to see uh, the decisions that have been taken in England uh, taken in Scotland. Uh, for example we do believe uh, that uh, higher education should be significantly funded from the public purse, whereas what's happened in England, of course, uh, is that that funding from the public purse has pretty well been ended. So we certainly are opposed. We certainly are opposed. <coughs> excuse me. We certainly are op opposed uh, to upfront tuition fees, but we have to find a way of sustainably supporting uh, our higher education sector, and the Scottish government have simply failed to do that. Yes, they've but brought that's what forward, I'm asking you, what is that They've way? brought forward a green paper uh, with a series of options which very little detail, poorly costed, yes, but what is and, your no, detail? Indication which, and, and no indication which they intend to, to pursue. So what is your detail and your specific costing? It, it, it's difficult to see. It's difficult to see how we can fund our higher education sector sustainably without so, some kind of graduate contribution. But if there is a way of doing that, we need to see the numbers, uh, and that would be a very good thing. On the issue then of a single police force, there seems to be conflicting opinion within Labour itself about whether that is a good idea or not. Well, there, 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 there's no conflicting policy position. Uh, we believe that. Yes, but how widely did you consult? Because you now have Labour councillors, for example, in the Highlands saying, look, any savings we make out of combining a force in the Highlands probably will go down south. And they have extreme concern about that. You've Eric Milligan today saying this is really not a good idea. Well, look, I, I know what Eric Milligan thinks. I don't know what Alex Salmond thinks. I really think it's time that Alex Salmond got off the fence on this one and told us what he believed in in terms of taking policing forward in Scotland. I believe in a single police force. Yes, because it might be that there could be some savings to protect frontline policing, but also because I think it is the right thing for effective policing in Scotland. Most policing in Scotland is either at a very local level or at a very strategic level. And I think a single force would allow us to be more effective at that strategic level. But I think we can do it in a way which also strengthens local autonomy and accountability, which is why I think the concerns that have been expressed from Grampian are actually misguided. Okay. If we turn now then from specific policies to perceptions, uh, the international reputation and credibility of Scotland is absolutely tied into perceptions about who the First Minister is. This is the job that you want, of course. Do you now regret deeply offending a number of countries, most recently including Montenegro? Well, uh, I, I uh, made, a, a, I think, a very valid point uh, about a claim which is made on the SNP's website. The SNP's website says 
Montenegro's independence shows how easy independence can be, that it took 40 days and a referendum. Now, that is simply not true. Yes, but the Montenegro's, point is, the hang Montenegro's, on, Montenegro's Affair specifically has said your statement that Montenegro was involved in ethnic cleansing, including your reference to a war crimes tribunal and a UN peacekeeping mission, is simply incorrect. And anyone would understand how accusing someone of that if it's incorrect is offensive. The, the point I made was this, that Montenegrin independence uh, uh, happened in the context of two world wars and the Balkan conflict, which included uh, all of those violent and tumultuous aspects. And I think that's way. true. I, I regret that if uh, it was interpreted that way, but it was not the statement that I made. The fact of the matter is this. For modern Montenegro to emerge as a democratic modern nation from the tumult of the dissolution of Yugoslavia is a remarkable achievement and it should not be dismissed as easy in order to make a political point about Scottish politics. I think that's what belittles Montenegro. If we go post-election now, would you rule out a coalition with the SNP? Uh, I, I don't rule out uh, any of these things. Uh, uh, my, uh, I think the lessons. The I, think, I think the lessons. I think the lessons that we learn from PR elections in Scotland and indeed close elections uh, in Westminster are that uh, politicians have to fight as hard as they can in elections for as many seats as they can possibly get, and after the election they have to consider the result that's been delivered by the electorate and the numbers there, uh, and then uh, take their conclusions from there. So, so, so I will fight for as many MSPs as I possibly can in May, uh, and we will consider the election result, and then we'll take it from there. But I, I would say to you that um, uh, minority administration, for example, is uh, a far more likely prospect now than perhaps it was mm -hmm. in 1999 and 2003, because we've had a minority administration but for the past few years. But you're not ruling out being Deputy First Minister to Alex Salmon First Minister or vice versa? I, I don't rule out Alex Salmon being my Deputy First Minister. I'm happy to rule out being Alex Salmon's Deputy. I think that's one of the less likely outcomes of the election, if I'm honest with you, Isabel. But I think, uh, you know, the run-up to the election uh, is about making our case. And I think we've got a strong case, a national care service, the apprenticeship guarantee, the literacy drive, the future jobs, done, uh, jobs fund. Uh, may, we will make the case uh, and we will try to win just as many MSPs as we possibly can. That's what will be on our mind in the run-up to the election. Ian Gray, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you.